This video will discuss the hydrogen atom eigenvalues for the three operators for which the hydrogen atom wave functions are eigenfunctions. So our hydrogen atom model, once again, is a single proton at the origin with mass mp. And we have an electron, which is some distance away from that r, with mass me. Charge of this is plus 1e. Charge of this is minus 1e. And the, the electron is free to move anywhere in three-dimensional space. Our Hamiltonian operator is the kinetic energy operator plus the potential energy operator. So negative h bar squared over 2 times mass of electron times Laplacian operator squared, or sorry, Laplacian operator, which is del squared, minus charge of the electron squared over 4 pi epsilon naught times r. So the, the hydrogen atom atomic orbitals, the wave functions of this model system, those are eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian operator. So h psi equals e psi but they are also eigenfunctions of two additional operators. Those are the operators that we introduced for the rigid rotor model system. The total angular momentum operator squared, which is equal to negative h-bar squared times the radial part of this Laplacian. So one over sine theta, dd theta, quantity sine theta, dd theta, plus one over sine squared theta, second partial derivative with respect to phi, in terms of the spherical polar coordinates theta and phi, the angular components. And finally, the angular, the z part of the angular momentum, z component of our angular momentum, which is equal to minus i h bar times first derivative with respect to phi. Okay, so we have our psi wave function depends on three quantum numbers, n, l, and m. N, L, and M are all integers. N is greater than or equal to 1. So it starts at 1 and it goes up to infinity. 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. For a given value of N, L goes from 0 up to N. So N equals 3, L equals 0, 1, 2, 3. Then for a given value of L, M goes from minus L up to positive L. So for L equals 2, M equals minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So what are these individual eigenvalues? So our wave function is a function of these spherical polar coordinates r, theta, and phi. So h psi is equal to the total energy times psi. So the makes sense that the eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian operator for these eigenfunctions is the total energy of that wave function. That's kind of our definition of the Schrodinger equation. All right, for L squared, the L squared operator acting on psi, our hydrogen atomic orbitals, behaves exactly like the rigid rotor wave functions did because the angular part of these wave functions are the same as they were for the rigid rotor. The angular part, the, the theta phi part, are the spherical harmonic functions. So L squared acting on psi and LM gives us an eigenvalue of h bar squared L times L plus 1. So this is our total angular momentum squared. So LZ, the Z component of that angular momentum, the eigenvalue there of LZ acting on psi is going to be h bar times m, the quantum number m. All right, so all of our wave functions for every value allowed of n, l, and m is an eigenfunction of each of these operators giving the distinct eigenvalues there. So eigen Functions with the same value of n have the same energy. Functions with the same value of l give the same uh, value, eigenvalue of l squared. Functions with the same value of m give the same eigenvalue of lz. But there is no wave function, there are no two wave functions which have the same value for all three operators. So these three operators can be used to make a uh, all of these states distinct where we have this high degeneracy at each of these energy levels. So each psi and LM will have a distinct set of these three eigenvalues. Alright, our energy as we saw in previous videos was equal to negative mass of the electron times charge of the electron to the fourth over 32 pi squared epsilon naught permittivity of free space squared h bar 
Planck's constant over 2 pi quantity squared times 1 over the quantum number n squared. So this gave a diagram like this. So in units of the energy divided by the absolute value of E1, we start at negative 1. n equals 2 is at negative 1 over 4, negative 1 over 9, negative 1 over 16, etc. Those are our eigenvalues for energy, as we can see there uh, in the purple for values of n. For our values of L, at each level we're going from 0 to n we're going from 0 to n minus 1. So we have L equals 0 is the only case for n equals 1. So the only eigenvalue there is going to be uh, the total angular momentum squared is 0. For n equals 2, we have L equals 0 and L equals 1. So we have a, we have a 0 and a 2 h-bar squared. n equals 3, we have a 0, 2 h-bar squared, 6 h-bar squared. 1 times 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 6, etc. As we go up there, 0, 2 h-bar squared, 6 h-bar squared, uh, 12 h-bar squared. And then for the eigenvalues of LZ, as we go up, the only value at n equals 0 is 0. N equals, at n equals 2, we have 0, 0, h-bar m, or sorry, 0, 0, h bar and minus h bar given those values of m then we have values that go all the way from minus 2 h bar to plus 2 h bar at n equals 3 and at n equals 4 we go all the way from minus 3 h bar up to 3 h bar for our eigenvalue of lz so these are the three operators for which our atomic orbital wave functions are eigenfunctions they give these distinct eigenvalues which depend on the values of n, l, and m. They can have the same values as other atomic orbitals, but each atomic orbital has a unique set of these three eigenvalues, which distinguishes it from the other orbitals.